thank you, Greg. For those of you who know Greg, the part about blowing things up might be true. The part about boarding the boats might be true. But he does browbeat. <laughs> So I want to answer some questions today about the President's climate commitment. Why did Presidents in 2007 think this was something they ought to be doing? Why higher education? Why community colleges? Why this community college? And finally, why me? Presidents in 2007 said they needed to do this because they recognized that global warming is placing our planet and future generations at risk. And by finding solutions to global warming, we will be contributing and improving public health, promoting social justice, preserving our natural resources, creating reliable and locally generated sources of energy, and contributing to the economy by creating new jobs and career paths and building a new economy for this country. Why higher education? Well, there are about 17 million students enrolled in about 4,000 colleges and universities in this country. And they are the future decision makers, the future teachers and architects and engineers and attorneys and business people and scientists and urban planners and policy analysts, cultural and spiritual leaders, journalists, advocates, activists, and politicians. It is our responsibility to educate those people so that they lead wisely. This is not an issue we can afford to ignore any longer. We are also a $317 billion industry. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars on energy and utilities every year. And we alone, as higher education, can make a huge difference in the carbon footprint. Why community colleges? Because community colleges are in and of their communities because their students, our students, live and work and understand the here and now of this issue. Why Chesapeake? Because we are incredibly aware of the fragility of this planet. We live near the bay. We live surrounded by agriculture. The watermen, the farmers, they get it. They understand the implications of global warming not as a purely scientific concept, but as something that affects their lives on a day-to-day -day basis, and we are them. We live among them. We have a responsibility to improve what happens around us. And why me? This is something that I have wanted to do pretty much since I got here. But it may be called the president's climate commitment, but no president can make a commitment without support from the institution. And I'm hoping that we have, in fact, convinced people like Mike, who have to ask the hard questions, or Monty, who asks them as well at every opportunity, that this is something we can do. Not just because it's the right thing, but because it's doable. We take on challenges that are difficult, but in the end, we have to believe we can accomplish them. If, if the path is too hard and too, the goal is too far away, people won't join together. But I think we've come to a point where we really believe we can make a difference. And so having gotten that support, I'm really proud of my ability to sign this on behalf of the, co of the college. And as Greg said, it is a huge, challenge. By signing this commitment, we are saying that we are ready to develop a concrete plan with specific goals and measures to bring our carbon footprint someday to zero. And as he said, we have done most of the easy stuff. It doesn't always feel easy, but just turning off those lights at night and the computers and everything else, we've actually saved $150,000 over the last few years. We have reduced our utility consumption by about 16%, and that's big. But that was, as we call it, the low-hanging fruit. Those are the things that everyone can do and can do fairly easily. The biggest challenge we face, and the one that will be the hardest, is the issue of transportation. We are a commuter 
college. And we do not have a well-developed, we hardly have a developed system of public transportation here. And that either means we have to build that kind of system or we have to figure out what not to do to make up for all the cars that we drive. And that will be a long road to hoe. But today we are making that commitment. We are saying together that we recognize the physical and moral imperative of doing this. And I am really pleased to be part of a college that gets it and part of a college that is willing to do that hard work. And I am especially happy to see the students there because we don't have that much longer to do this work. We're gonna pass it along to you. You're gonna pass it along to the next generation, but we will start now. Someone has to take that initiative. Someone has to make the decision. Someone has to make the commitment. And again, it, I may be signing the document, but we are all preparing for this commitment. And I wanna thank everybody who's been involved and everybody who is joining me today to do this hard work. And now it is um, really a privilege to be able to sign this document. And I think for those of you over there, the screen is here and you can come over and actually witness it. Um, and I'm signing it, of course, with a Chesapeake College pen. <laughs> Folks, please come up and gather around. I'd like to invite the members of the Campus Sustainability Operations team to the front of the room because this represents an awful, awful large accomplishment for them. I think I saw Alyssa Moore somewhere. Come on up, Alyssa. Kathy Pearson is here, our student representative to the team. Doug Gray is here. Mike Kilgus, where'd you go? I saw you in the back somewhere. There you are. Monty Garretson, come on forward. Nothing on this campus gets done without the director of facilities. That's his wind turbine out front. Am I missing anybody from the sustainability team who's here? I'd like to take, them, take a moment to say it's been a pleasure. Oh, Tracy Brinkerhoff as well, thank you. I'd like to say it's been a pleasure working with you folks on this project. Thank you for your tireless energy, for the relentless questioning, for the, the, the impetus to do this. It's, uh, this is a privilege this morning. Thank you. Madam President. <laughs>